Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew Stott, I'm the Emperor of Stemeria, and today I want to go over some of the more bizarre criticisms of Stemeria. Now, micronations and micronationalists criticising Stemeria for one reason or another is not new. We've had it more or less since our inception, but the uh, amount of criticism that we get from some circles is uh, steadily on the rise. It sort of coincides with the progress and uh, expansion of Stemeria itself. Any kind of... Uh, I mean, th th this is the thing. Any kind of... Uh, upwards trajectory that a micronation has goes hand in hand with every other micronation by and large trying their best to pull them back down to their level uh, in some form or another under the guise of x y and z and i want to go over some of the more peculiar some of the more bizarre criticisms of stemeria in this video uh, because i think it would be quite fun to do and uh, so yeah let's let's just get started Now, this one always makes me chuckle a little bit, um, because, I mean, the Empire of Stemeria is an empire, and as such, trying to expand the empire, uh, I mean, you might be able to define it as imperialist if you like, but trying to incorporate more people and more micronations into the Empire of Stemeria is kind of the goal. That is why we are called the Empire of Stemeria and not the Kingdom of Stemeria. I mean, that, that should be pretty common sense. And I think the, uh, the, the thought process between defining Stemeria as this imperialist micronation is to try to give the impression that we are somehow bullying micronations or using coercion to force them into becoming a part of Stemeria. And if they don't, or, or if they don't, you know, it, it's just one of those weird things that in, in micronational terms, micronational expansionism comes purely through voluntary association. Like every micronation that forms a part of Stemeria's empire has done so freely and willingly. And these micronations and these micronational, more specifically the micronational leaders um, of Norwick, of uh, Wayward, of uh, Selassia and of Moorland, they are all grown men and women that have decided off their own backs that they want to become a part of Stemeria's empire. And I am more than happy for them to do so because they are micronations that I have a lot of time for. And, you know, this, 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 this weird, this weird belief that Stemeria is somehow, I don't know, using, like I said, coercion, intimidation? I don't know. What exactly are they trying to criticize? How dare these grown men and women voluntarily associate with Stemeria in this way? What is their gripe? I, I don't get it. Maybe someone else does, maybe someone else can explain it. But I think the Empire of Stemeria as a micronation and a micronational empire that specifically strives to promote the cultures and identities of individual micronations within its empire in supporting these micronations, in a lot of cases, financially, in trying to build ties with the micronations within its own empire in order to build internal trade work, tr trade networks. It, it, it's just, it's weird to me that they think that this is some sort of, 
coercive or uh, you know nefarious activity that we're engaged with that is worthy of condemnation and i think it's just the the idea of all imperialism all you know that all <laughs> like, i just i don't know what they're trying to get at but this is always one that uh, tickles me a little bit um yes the empire of Sumeria is uh imperialist that's 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 what it is Now, this is also a really weird criticism uh, in that Stumeria from its inception has always advocated for the accumulation and use of gold and silver as a form of sound money in order to utilise it as a medium of exchange within the intermicronational uh, economy that we are looking to build. Now, I have made many videos on this before. In fact, I am, rather than going over it now, going to link um, some uh, one or two videos in this particular uh, topic uh, just so you can go and watch those if you're interested but the long and the short of it is we use gold and silver as sound money and we oppose the use of fiat currency either macronational or micronational and when I say fiat currency I'm talking about bits of paper that have been printed off and someone has said it has value that is fiat currency now the idea that we are bragging or showing off our wealth because we are trying to do what we set out to do from day one is a very weird concept. It's like saying, like, I'm trying to think of a better example, but a micronation that is promoting environmentalism. They, they care about the environment and they go litter picking and they show some pictures of them litter picking. And then someone goes, oh, for God's sake, look at you. Look at you litter picking. <laughs> Haven't we seen that before? Blah, blah, blah. It's that sort of same concept. We are looking to build an intermicronational uh, economy, a market, using gold and silver. So, of course, we're going to talk about gold and silver. We're going to talk about the benefits of using gold and silver. Why wouldn't we? What else are we supposed to talk about? Yeah, this is what I don't get. It's a central core theme of Stemeria. So why wouldn't we discuss it? It's not like we don't discuss other matters. We discuss environmentalism, we discuss agriculture, we discuss energy, we discuss government, we discuss taxation, we discuss rights and responsibilities. And monetary systems is something that we also talk about and is one of the fundamental defining features of Stemeria, that we are the only micronation that I am aware of in the world that has and uses uh, gold and silver as micronational money, as in there is, you know, the Stemerian satyrs with Stemeria's emblem, its name, and the other micronations involved in the Stemeria's empire, they will also be on the reverse side of these coins. We use these to trade with other micronations and other micronational lists. That, as far as I know, is not something that is done anywhere in the world. So of course we're going to talk about it. We're proud of this accomplishment. Why wouldn't we be? We've invested a lot of time, a lot of, of uh, money, a lot of resources into promoting this. So of course we're going to talk about it just because you don't have it, because you don't have the means, the interest or the resources to do so, doesn't mean that we are obliged to not to, you know, discuss or talk about something that we are incredibly proud of and something that we think that more people should understand about the differences between money and currency. And this, again, is why one of the reasons that we do it is because it is an educational tool. If people don't understand the difference between money and currency, if people don't understand why we use gold and silver rather than worthless bits of paper that are printed off at home, then you need to start digging. We made, like I said, various videos about this in the past um, and we'll make several more in the future because this is an incredibly important topic. And especially in this day and age when we're talking about recessions, we're talking about inflation going through the roof. We're talking about the collapse of a global monetary system because they use fiat currency. And over the course of the lockdown periods, you know, they inflated the currency into oblivion because no one was working, no one was earning, no one was paying a significant amount of taxes, and the government was instead giving people money. Where did that come from? It was just printed, created out of thin air. 
and the amount of currency now in circulation around the world is at all-time highs. What does that mean? That means all the prices are going to go up. And that, I, I mean, I'm going to go on a serious tangent on it, like, so I'm just going to stop myself there. I think I've needed, I, I think I've said all I needed to say about this particular topic. We talk about uh, Stemeria's wealth in the sense that we have gold and silver, or more specifically silver at this point, um, because we are incredibly proud of what we have accomplished. We have produced micronational money, not currency money. And we are utilising that to build a micronational economy, both of which are two things that we're very keen to do and have promoted for years. So yes, we are going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it regardless of what people might complain about. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's that one out the way. That one's probably irked me more than it should have done, but that's that one out the way. This is another really weird one to me because it says people seem to think that because Stemeria is selling merchandise because we're charging citizens uh, a fee to become a citizen because we're uh, looking to build a micronational economy because we're focused on building an imperial treasury in order to purchase the necessary tools, equipment, the land in order to accomplish our values and objectives. This has got something to do with the monetization of micronationalism. And this is a really, really weird concept to me because there are micronations out there that do exactly the same thing and have been around for a long time and are incredibly well known. I mean, you want to go through a list? I mean, you've got Sealand, they charge £500 if you want to become uh, one of the lords of Sealand. Are they, have they monetized micronationalism? I mean, as far as I know, that's all they do. They sell titles and merchandise. They don't do anything else beyond that, as far as I'm aware. If someone wants to correct me, feel free. But Ladonia. Ladonia, uh, I believe their citizenship is free, but if you want to acquire a noble title, I think they charge something in the region of $80, I think. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Atlantium, the Empire of Atlantium, they charge $25 for citizenship, I believe. Uh, who else have we got out there? We've got uh, Malusia. They don't actually allow people to become citizens of Malusia, um, but you can go onto their you know, store and buy things from Malusia. In fact, you can buy war bonds for their war for East Germany. I mean, is that monetizing micronationalism? I mean, it, the, the list just, it does go on and on and on about micronations that hark on about, or micronationalists, or generally just people harken on about the monetization of micronationalism, as if Stemeria has kind of corrupted the idea that a micronation could ever need financial resources behind it to accomplish what it wants to accomplish. And I think these criticisms come from those who just don't, want to contribute financially to their own micronation. I don't think it's any more complicated than that. I think there's their own lack of commitment to their own projects, their own lack of financial resources within their own micronation gives them a chip on their shoulder, I suppose, and they feel the need to lash out at micronations that are uh, making strides and being successful in the accumulation of you know, a suitable amount of financial resources in order to accomplish the things that they have set out to accomplish. And I think it's, we're not going to get land for free. We're not going to buy silver and gold, uh, you know, coins to utilize for our uh, micronational um, economy for nothing. We're not going to find flags and flagpoles or sabres or badges or passport covers or, uh, you know, anything else like that, you know, paying for the website or email address or postage and packaging, this all costs uh, money. And working towards raising enough capital to accomplish the things that we want to set out to accomplish is something that we will continue to do, whether or not people scream from the sidelines that it shouldn't be about that. I mean, what what are those micronations looking to do? I mean, I, I just honestly, again, I, I just can't think what the, the thought process is with these micronations and these micronationalists that think the promotion of a micronation 
in the sense that it is trying to accumulate financial resources from its supporters to accomplish things that it has set out to do, that is somehow evil. And I just don't understand their, their rationale. Uh, it, it, I mean, maybe someone else will, but again, this is just a weird, bizarre sort of uh, take to have on Stemeria in particular, uh, that we have somehow uh, corrupted or are contributing to the corruption of uh, micronationalism by uh, having, I don't know, having money involved in it. But uh, yeah, that's the next one. Again, a really weird one, that the idea that Stomeria is superior to other micronations, I mean, I just don't get it. Because there's, there's only a couple of ways that I can think this can be looked at. Because I've made an entire video dedicated to why micronations can and should exist for whatever reason they want to exist for. I don't care if they're a, a meme micronation, a single issue micronation, a micronation that's looking to build a real community or whatever else, or anything in between. I've made an entire video about why uh, trying to segregate and then trying to uh, exclude micronations along these lines is ridiculous. And yet this weird perception that we are against any micronation that is not like us, that we will, you know, purposely try to exclude micronations from the wider community based on this premise, is an absolute nonsense. It's a fabrication. It's a lie. I mean, we're one of the most vocal proponents of allowing as many micronations and micronationalists as want to exist for whatever reason they want to exist within the community. Get on with it to each their own. I don't care. What I have said in the past and what I continue to say now is that just because a micronation has the right to exist doesn't mean I have to affiliate with it. And I don't think that's a particularly radical of statement to make. Just because meme town exists doesn't mean that I have to associate it with any way. It doesn't mean that I can't criticise it. Just because a hardcore Stalinist micronation or a hardcore Hitlerite micronation exists doesn't mean that I can't criticise those micronations. Who said I couldn't criticise them? I mean, are all micronation, and this is another one, micronations that go around saying all micronations are equal, we're all equal, we're all the same, we're all brothers and sisters striving for something, we should all be supporting each other. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you want to get into bed with some of the micronations out there, and I know more than a few micronations out there, I'm not even, I tell you what, I'm not even going to name names because that's not what this video is about, but there are some genuine crazy people out there, uh, micronationalists, and if you want to affiliate with them, if you want to associate with them, then you go right ahead. If you want to associate with a neo-Nazi micronation, you go ahead. If you think that they are the same as you, if you th think that they are on the same level as you, you do you. We are not the same. We will not affiliate, and in a lot of cases, we are indeed better than them in pretty much any metric that you want to use. I mean, I've had uh, a micronation who, again, I don't want to name names, so I'm not going to, but there are, uh, one micronation that particularly strikes me is uh, one who uh, declared war on us, doxed us, and threatened to uh, attack us with a potato gun. Now, are we better than that micronation? Yes, of course we are. So, if someone tells me that, uh, you know, Stemeria thinks it's just better than everyone else, there are definitely micronations that I think we're better than. I think there's a lot of other micronations that are better than other micronations. Not everyone is the same. Not everyone is striving for the same thing. Not everyone is looking to accomplish the same thing. Not everyone is at the same level, even if they are looking to accomplish the same thing. There are variations. There are differences. It is fine. Not everyone is equal. Not everyone is holding hands and singing Kumbaya. It's fine. Relax. Just because I don't think all micronations are equal, just because I don't want to affiliate or associate with certain micronations, does not mean that I think that there is some, you know, hierarchy in the sense that we're here and everyone else is down here. That is not what I've ever said. That is not what I've ever claimed to be. That is not the way we've ever presented ourselves. Like I said, I have always strived to uh, 
promote the idea that the wider micronational community should be open to everyone. But if you want to affiliate with certain micronations, that is entirely up to the individual to decide. And we have decided not to associate formally with a great, great swathe of micronations out there. Now, this is a slightly more recent criticism of Stemeria, which has come about because we made a video condemning the Empire of Eternia for failing to honour a trade agreement, um, and uh, more specifically, when the uh, question of the trade agreement and several other issues were raised to Emperor AP of Eternia, uh, questions that the associated and observer states within the Empire of Stemeria had, um, they had reservations about pursuing a formal alliance with the Empire of Eternia. They wanted those uh, questions um, uh, answered. They wanted those concerns addressed, uh, along with the big question mark of the uh, trade agreement that was unfulfilled after four months. And these questions and concerns were dismissed out of hand. And this has uh, been presented by a very small number of micronations as a blistering attack on the Empire of Eternia. They're the victims. And this was kind of highlighted further in uh, Emperor AP's response video to our own, which I don't particularly recommend anyone watch because like a lot of his live streams there, it is three hours long. Um, and it doesn't really go into much, frankly. It's just, the package was not sent, and uh, it just rattled off excuses, frankly. I mean, it, w it wasn't anything more than that. But in that video, he did also claim that he felt he was being bullied, or, or I don't know, intimidated. And this is uh, something that has been projected by a relatively small number of micronations, particularly ones that had no affiliation or genuine affiliation with the Empire of Eternia, but just didn't like the Empire of Stemeria to begin with, and thought this would be a good idea to pick sides and then try to get some sort of fight going. Because these are what these kind of micronations do. They don't have any genuine activities or interests going on, so they try to fluff up themselves and try to, you know, make themselves feel more important by sticking their nose into these sorts of issues in a way that they think is going to damage us. Now, the uh, issue with all of this, obviously, is that the Empire of Eternia was not a victim. They're the ones that have our merchandise. They're the ones that have our silver. They never sent the package to us. And this has been painted as some sort of aggressive action on our part. And the, uh, the, the two primary issues that were highlighted uh, by Emperor AP was a question of time and financial resources. And I want to reiterate that, you know, four months is a long time since we sent our package. We sent our package and we were waiting four months, still nothing happened, still nothing's happened yet, still. Um, but the uh, idea that there was a lack of time when I don't know how many dozens and dozens and dozens of hours was dedicated to live stream footage about the most pointless of topics, um, as just a, an obvious example of a lack of time issue, and then there was obviously the financial resource issue. Didn't have enough money. Had enough money to spend $12,000 on some land. Uh, Emperor AP, after the trade agreement had begun, was then gifted $400 from one of his citizens. They had over $1,000 raised from Patreon. They're still raising money through their Patreon campaign. And they're even talking about putting funds aside for uh, Microcon for uh, two Eternians, one of which is uh, Emperor AP, which I believe is about $120, $140 a ticket. But no, there's still not enough financial resources available to send a package containing uh, our merchandise or previously what we expected, their merchandise or their uh, ingots. So this idea that there was a lack of time, this idea that there was a lack of financial resources at the disposal to conclude a debt that they owed to us is a complete fabrication. This idea that they are being bullied or intimidated by us is also a complete nonsense. In fact, when we released this video, I was incredibly surprised not only by the number of micronations and micronationalists, some relatively well known and reputable, that contacted us um, and contacted me uh, to not only express their support, but also to share their own stories and their own history with the Empire of Eternia, because this is obviously not the first time that they have irked 
um, micronations in that way. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to sort of name names because, uh, you know, public statements, while some were made, others were not, and I'm not going to call anyone out on that front. Um, but what also struck me was that I was also contacted by a number of uh, high-ranking um, or leading citizens of the Empire of Eternia to not only offer their apologies, but to even offer to pay themselves the cost of the package to be sent over. Uh, I actually declined this because I did not consider it to be the duty of the citizens of a micronation to fulfil the debt of that micronation that is down to the emperor of that micronation or the highest authority of that micronation. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think probably the, the funniest part of this was that they, they just weren't aware. Obviously, the Emperor AP had told them something that was not true or just outright misleading because they were the, under the impression that everything was tickety-boo, nothing was going wrong, nothing had happened, everything was still on track. And in fact, the last message that I sent to Emperor AP was that I was going to make a public statement about this. And the fact that uh, after several days before I launched that video, he still didn't contact his own government uh, officials, his own citizens, to say, this has gone on, this is going to happen, strikes me as very peculiar. But uh, again, going on a tangent, I did not want to make this a uh, response to a response video, uh, but the idea that we are somehow bullying or intimidating uh, someone or a micronation because... But because what? Because they they took our stuff and didn't return it? I mean, it's just not the case, is it? I mean, when this happened, I had uh, one of three options. I could have either have said, yep, I meekly accept your terms and conditions where I will just sit on my hands and wait for you to send us a package at some point in the future. I could have gone behind Emperor AP's back. I could have contacted his uh, Eternian government officials and I said, you need to sort this out. Or I could have done a public statement condemning the Empire of Eternia. I opted to the third one. I needed to make this as uh, public and as well known as possible because this is an affront. This is about one of the worst things I think you can do as a micronationalist. If you cannot honour an agreement where genuine uh, products and genuine wealth is being exchanged, if you cannot honour that kind of agreement, then that needs to be condemned. This is not a Discord raid. This is not someone saying something mean on Reddit or Twitter. This is something a lot more serious. And I did make it clear in my initial video that Micronations should think twice about doing this in the future unless there is something, you know, an airtight, ironclad agreement with legal ramifications in case things fall through. Because even though this was only a relatively small package, um, I think the contents of it was probably 40 or 50 pounds in total that we sent to Emperor AP and will probably never get back. Um, the uh, reality is that some micronations might strive to do something more meaningful and something larger scales, you know, hundreds or even thousands of pounds worth of goods and services being exchanged. And if those micronations fail to honour these sorts of agreements, that becomes a very serious issue. And as I said, I think just failing to honour these sorts of agreements is probably one of the worst things a micronation can do. Because there is no micronational war, there is no conflict, I mean, bar Emperor AP smacking someone in the face, um, you know, some sort of violent crime or something like that, failing to honour these sorts of agreements is probably one of the worst things you can do. And for a micronation like Eternia, which is looking to build some sort of trade network with other micronations, it smacks of an incredibly dishonest and poor excuse of a trade partner. So, yeah, that, that's really all I needed to say about that. Um, again, I didn't want to make this an... Eternia video as such. I didn't even really want to mention it, but it is something that has been asked about us uh, on occasion, so I just wanted to get it out there. We are not bullying the Empire of Eternia. The Empire of Eternia was wrong in its uh, actions. Uh, we were not. We called them out on something that they did, which was wrong. That is all we did. 
So those were some of the more bizarre criticisms of the Empire of Stemeria that I've come across. I'm sure there are plenty more, and I may make another one at some point in the future, it depends on if this one gains any traction or not, I suppose. If people aren't interested in hearing about the criticisms of Stemeria, then that's fine. We'll discuss something else. But if you did enjoy this video and you wanted to become a part of the Stemerian community, just to make those haters a little bit more angry, a little bit more triggered, then uh, please feel free to do so through our Patreon campaign, the link of which I shall leave in the description below as always. And you can also find the micronations that form a part of the Empire of Stemeria, as well as our allies, uh, down in the uh, description below as well. Uh, but yes, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.